Welcome, my name's Anthony King. I just wanted to say that this series is based upon my book, Living in a Bubble, which is available on paperback and Amazon Kindle. If you want to know more, you can find it on my website, anthony-king.com. Thank you. And welcome back to my video series about mild autism spectrum disorder in adults based on my book, Living in a Bubble. Let's continue from where we left off on our last video together. Psychological devices and techniques. I suspect that most people on the spectrum, if I say living in my world, will know exactly what I'm talking about. I really took a substantial amount of time thinking about this issue and how I would address it in my own way for myself. However, address in actuality means attempted address. I visited Berlin, Germany, and I decided to use the opportunity to test out some psychological devices and mental techniques to see if it could help us with living in your own world or living in a bubble, the issue. The first couple of attempts didn't quite work, but then I worked out something which actually had a substantive impact. Before I explain and tell you all about it, I want to tell you about a technique I use when I teach my students in dance class, because it relates to what we are talking about today. Doing something physically impossible. There are some dance moves that I teach that are physical and anatomically impossible to perform. This is because the human body cannot physiologically execute them. With that said, I explain the process and then ask the students to attempt the impossible move and to imagine that it's happening. There's never been a single occasion where the physically impossible has been made possible, but, but, something else has happened. They came close. The challenge of living in a bubble. The one thing which I really focused on was the idea of feeling like I was living in a bubble. How on earth can we solve that one? It's like you've been placed in a world with lots of people, but you have an invisible bubble around you. You want to break out of it, but you can't, as it's physically impossible. You see people walking past and people having their life experiences, and you wish, you wish that you could also experience that too. But you feel that you can't because you feel like you live in your bubble. How do you solve that? That's not an easy one to tackle for sure. It took me two years to come up with something that I'm willing to share with you, that I've tested, that I find works for me. After two years of many types of mental techniques and psychological devices, on a really low day, it hit me. It was so obvious too. How can you escape the inescapable? Well, you don't. I told myself, you embrace the bubble that doesn't exist. Embracing the bubble and living in your own world. The real pain comes from not necessarily living in a bubble, but feeling excluded from what's outside of that non-existent bubble. However, this is 100% psychological and emotional, which means that the solution is probably also psychological and emotional. There certainly is no bubble around you separating you from the world. It's a feeling only. That knowledge alone can be extremely empowering because it puts you back in control. You focus on what you can control and not what you can't. And that alone is very powerful because this will be attractive and infectious. However, the mental device is completely counterintuitive. I tested it in Prague, Czech Republic for about five days. I've called my psychological device the internal furnish of fulfillment. And it's an internal validation system for you inside your bubble. There's more about it in the book. So please read the book and you can see diagrams and a little bit more about it you will find that the world may well join you inside your bubble. The internal furnace of fulfillment. It's a very powerful psychological device in itself. The irony is I found that this route can, in actual fact, give you a feeling of breaking out of the bubble. It's like a backdoor route into the world. It takes a little work, but not much. It takes time, but not much. And the most important ingredient of all, it takes enthusiasm and confidence. But this metaphor is a psychological device designed to help refocus your perspective towards internal fulfillment rather than looking, looking for and towards external validation or fulfillment, which helps towards feeling more comfortable within any perceived bubble and indirectly circumvents that same bubble so that you feel even more connected and less excluded. Here is the process and the rules and main points of 
the internal furnace of fulfillment. One, you must have a passion that you can physically occupy your time and attention with and put your energy into. This must be something that you can enjoy and something which is not harmful to anybody or anything. If you don't have one, create one. As previously discussed in the book, it will probably be your passion and area of expertise. You can then make a list relevant to your passion. That list should be impossible to achieve because it's so long. This is a very good way of shutting down excuses, by the way. For example, if you're an expert in World War II, in World War II history, you can make a list that goes something like this. Visit every World War II museum in your city, then country, then continent, then world. Read every major World War II book ever written. Visit every World War II historical site in your city then country, then world. Discover things that have never been discovered before about World War II. Write a book about your experiences and begin to teach about what you've learned. Learn all about the aircraft of World War II. Work out a way to fly in a World War II aircraft, etc. You get the point. The list is endless and it cuts off any excuses at source because this excludes the possibility of being bored or not having something to do. Now, in case your brain starts creating more excuses like financial issues, etc., then you can reorder your list to only include free activities first until you have acquired any resources needed. Even then, you will have more than enough than you, you will have more than you can possibly ever achieve. If you need money, you can make money. If you can't work out a way to make money, then return to the free activities until there are no more to do, which is impossible as you don't have enough decades on this earth to even read every single World War II or history book in the library, which you can borrow for free, for example. Two, you decide in one moment that you will utilize the internal furnace of fulfillment. You mentally decide that from now on, your fulfillment comes from inside of you, and that source is powered by you and only you. The furnace is not a real furnace, it's a special one, because the heat, i.e. fulfillment, happiness, acceptance, validation, can only come from your internal furnace. And secondly, the same heat generated by your furnace is non-transferable. This means that it is unlike real fire. It is completely invalid when it is from outside of you and loses its energy. In the same way, somebody can't give you their heat from their furnace. This means that it can only be sourced internally. This means if somebody walks up to you and gives you 100 million pounds in cash, you accept in advance that this cannot give you any heat, i.e. fulfillment, happiness, acceptance, validation, etc. The most beautiful person on earth walks up to you and asks you on a date or to marry you. You accept in advance that this cannot give you any heat, i.e. fulfillment, happiness, acceptance, validation, etc. You are promoted to CEO of the most valuable company of all time and you accept in advance that this cannot give you any heat, i.e. fulfillment, happiness, acceptance, validation, etc. Anything nice, good, positive given to you externally cannot give you any heat, i.e. fulfillment, happiness, acceptance or validation, etc. Three, you completely embrace your bubble and turn your lens inwards to ultimately face outwards. This means that you, as extreme as this is going to sound, from now on expect nothing from anybody, regardless of the circumstance. In fact, you do not require acknowledgement or appreciation at all, no matter what you do. You do because it is an intrinsic value and aligned with your passion and well-being or something you are required to do for the greater good. The greater good is something which is a personal moral decision for you to decide on your own. If you determine that something is morally required or practically required, then do it. If not, don't. If you are selfish, you will remain selfish. If you're generous, you will remain generous. However, everything else which is outside of those exceptions is purely focused on your passion or to that end. This means you walk up to a stranger you help them pick up all of their dropped belongings. You do not expect a thanks. You do not expect even a look or the smallest amount of acknowledgement. You may accept it, but you don't expect it. You clean your best friend's house from top to bottom. You do not expect a thanks. You do not expect even a look or the smallest acknowledgement. You may accept it, 
but you do not expect it. You give away that 100 million pounds that you just got to charity. You do not expect thanks. You do not expect even a look or the smallest acknowledgement. You may accept it, but you do not expect it. You engage in a conversation with somebody. You do not expect to reply. You do not expect even a look or the smallest amount of acknowledgement. You may accept it, but you do not expect it. Everything you do is focused 100% on advancing your main life passion, with the exception of actions which you determine are morally or practically required for the greater good or your own good within your own personal moral spectrum. To repeat, the action is executed for its intrinsic value only with zero expectation of acknowledgement or expectation that it will give you any warmth or heat except the heat that is generated internally from the power of the intrinsic action and the heat from that. You do not feel the need to speak, communicate or receive anything from anyone in particular. So this is a metaphorical device to help you put you in a different frame of mind and perceiving the world slightly differently. There's more in the book. Thanks for joining me today. See you in our next video together.